Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. I'm doing a, an AD&D monster video on the Gith Yankee. But before I get into that, if you enjoy my content, it would really help me out if you would hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, share my content on social media, and post a comment or two. Remember, I welcome your comments, even if you disagree with me. If you enjoy a good book, check out my author page on Amazon. My pen name is H.L. Anderson. If, if you can find a bit. You can find all of my books there, and I like to think I write good stories that make you think. I wrote a three-book Western series, a science fiction Western series called Drifters. Uh, I wrote a fun story about a house in New Orleans where the monsters all hang out, the house off Farrago Road. I wrote a political fantasy called The Righteous President, and I have a two-book. I want. I'm going to make it into a series, hopefully, but. Right now, there's only two of them. The first one is Vanguard 1. The second one is Task Force Terminus. It's set in the future, science fiction. It's a study of humanity from an alien perspective. Check them out. I hope you enjoy them. But now, on with the video. The Gith Yankee. As a dungeon master, I'm always looking for different sorts of monsters to run against my players. One of the more interesting of the monsters in the game is the Gith Yankee. Gith Yankee can be found on page 43 to 45 of the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Fiend Folio. I suggest you read through the description of these beings very carefully before you use them in your game. Also note the special relationship and the warfare between the Gith Yankee and the Gith Zeri. The Gith Zeri can be found immediately following the Gith Yankee in that same tone. Gith Yankee are powerful fighters and magic users, and sometimes illusionists. There are no Gith Yankee rangers, monks, druids, or assassins. No mention is made of clerics or thieves. This is perhaps a loophole to create individualized Gith Yankee, maybe different types of Gith Yankee within your campaign. These may possibly be story hooks or some sort of trope that you can use. It's. <clears throat> What, what I like about Advanced Dungeons and Dragons is there's loopholes. You can change the story to make it what you want. Not everything is ruled and regulated to death like it is in later issues, later editions. Gith Yankee are, well are a well-organized theocracy centered around their worship of a high-level lich queen. And again, no mention is made of clerics, which begs the question if it's a theocracy, how do they worship a lich queen? You see what I'm saying? That it's possible that there are no clerics because this lich queen is not actually a god. You see what I'm saying? That might be a story trope you can use in your game. Uh, this theocracy takes the form of a feudal organization of sorts, with no lord owing any allegiance to any other lord, except for that lich queen. <coughs> Excuse me. Each astral plane castle has a lord, and each is independent of the others. Seeing as they all worship the same Lich Queen, it's likely these lords would be willing to work together on some important and large task. But again, they may there may be animosity. We don't know. Take note of specifically of the weapons and armor that Gith Yankee employ, especially the silver swords. Also take note of their animosity and history with Illithids and their psionics. Illithids are mind flayers. Yeah, they have a history with them and they do not like them. Gith Yankee will also attack uh, mind flayers. If, if, if an encounter happens and there's a mind flayer and humans or other adventurers, the Gith Yankee will attack the mind flayer first and then go after the others. It says that in the book, so... Be sure and read up on it very thoroughly. Also take note of their pact with a group of red dragons. As powerful as they are, they become as astronomically more so with red dragons as steeds and transportation. All in all, Gith Yankee make exceptional opponents for a mid to high level party. You don't want to run this, run these guys if your party's first and second level. You, or if, if you do, if, if your campaign is set up, and through the course of the of the game, they happen to run into these and they're low level. Give them an out. You do not want to force them to encounter these things. Give them the opportunity to hide, run away, whatever. 
Otherwise, you're you're just murdering your players. I'm just saying. Years ago, I was running a group of fifth to uh, uh, excuse me, of five eighth to ninth level player characters through a wilderness adventure. They saw in the distance a group of four Gith Yankee conversing with a red dragon on a rocky ledge. They had the option to leave well enough alone and go about their business. Instead, for some dumbass reason, these five players decided to try and sneak attack the dragon. Again, you cannot make that shit up. Of course, they were psionically detected by the Githyanki, and one of the Githyanki leaped onto the dragon's back and took to the air. The group attacked the other three, and neither side had any real advantage until the dragon did a strafing run with its breath weapon. Three player characters died outright, and the other two were killed the next round. This was all on them, the player characters. It was all on them. They did not have to attack at all. They had the option to avoid it. It was... The, the battle for them was a shit show. And several of the players got upset with me. And I said, I never told you to attack them. I mean, if you see four strange-looking creatures talking to a, an ancient huge red dragon, or at least a large red dragon, any kind of red dragon, you and you're only eighth or ninth level. There's five of you. You don't attack it. I mean, oh, oh look, he's got a nuclear weapon. Let's attack him. Oh look, he's got an armored division. Let's attack him. No, you don't do that. <laughs> he's he's got an F-15 jet fighter. Let's attack him with swords. Yeah, you don't do it. That's that's a common sense failure on the player character's part. And I tried to be as easy as I could with him, but it's hard to be easy with a red dragon. You just can't do it. Gith Yankee are difficult to deal with at best and do not care for interference on their missions. They are serious tacticians. They are extremely intelligent. Extremely intelligent. Play them as such. These guys are not stupid. They're not your run-of-the-mill thugs. They do their thing. They don't care for interference. They're not... They're no-nonsense, no-bullshit professionals play them as such these guys can come up with serious tactics they can come up with serious they can do some significant damage that's all i'm saying and if your players decide they want to attack them that's on them there ain't nothing you can do about it hope this finds everybody well you folks have a good one god bless one and all Vanguard 1, Devo Poland, a scientific representative from a pacifist race called the Gandiri, has come to Earth to learn the one thing that humans do better than anyone else in the galaxy, to fight. In the sequel, Task Force Terminus, Earth is at war with an alien race called the Imdola. Devo Poland's new commission in the Terran fleet exposes him to bigotry and treachery, and he comes to realize that sometimes political and military maneuvering are one and the same. 